Hello everyone, my name is Cameron and welcome back to the channel and today we are doing the Wrestlemania 36 Night 1 review. I'm going to be doing this in, I don't know, I might be doing this fucking night in two parts to be honest because I don't know how, um, how long this video is going to be because there's a lot, one sec. I don't know how long this video is actually going to be because the pay-per-view was a long fucking show. There's nine matches per um, per card, and it's a pain in the ass. So really quick, I do want to update. There were two matches added to the uh, card after I made the predictions video. There was a pre-show match added for both days. Uh, Drew Gulak versus Cesaro was the pre-show match for the first night, and Liv Morgan versus Natalya is the one for the second night. Jesse and I both went for Drew Gulak. And Jesse went for Natalia and I went for Liv Morgan. Just so you guys know what the updated predictions are in case you don't follow me on Twitter. So we did have this prediction out before the match actually started just to let you guys all know. So first match obviously was the men's singles match between Cesaro and Drew Gulak. Uh, prediction was Gulak for both. It was a great fucking match. Let me just say like this match was great until the ending. <laughs> So uh, Gulak immediately went for the arm, started working it, trying to kind of set up for a submission. I don't know what submission, because the Gulak doesn't really use... I guess the Dragon Sleeper does kind of attack the arm a little bit. Uh, Cesaro tries to neutralize it a few times, but Gulak keeps avoiding it. He works the arm more after they get back in the ring, after uh, going outside for a bit, after... I believe Cesaro went out first, but I can't fully remember. Uh, they both kind of went back and forth, like... Both of them went out and then came back in at different times, so it was really weird. Like, one got thrown out, and then a few minutes later, the other got thrown out. I think it was Gulak out first, and then Cesaro got thrown out a little bit later. Uh, yeah, and then he throws Cesaro uh, shoulder first in the steps, uh, goes up top, he gets caught with an uppercut. This is why Gulak does not go up top too much. Uh, he goes for, uh, from a pin into another arm lock, which I thought was a great transition. He rolls under Cesaro, so like... He went, he got thrown against the ropes after, I think it was an uppercut, I can't remember what it was, but like he like dove under Cesaro and then caught him in his leg. It was, it was great, but Cesaro got out of it and hit him with a big boot. He went for the neutralizer again, uh, but his, he couldn't because of his arm. Uh, Gulak nearly takes out the ref as Cesaro pushes him away. Uh, he hits him with a really, like the uppercut looked really weird because like he did it with his left arm. It just looked really strange. He hits an airplane slip, spin at one point, not even using his hands. Slams him down, and Cesaro wins. All one predictions for Jesse and I, 6 out of 10. The reason it got a 6 out of 10 is because I did not like the fact that it ended off an airplane spin. An airplane spin is kind of a cool spot to see. It's kind of like the coast to coast. It's not really a finisher. It's just a cool spot to do, especially if you're not doing it with hands. So Cesaro winning off it was a little bit kind of kooky to me. I didn't really like it. I'm glad he got the win. Uh, he deserves it, but it was a really dumb ending in my opinion. Uh, and then they go into the actual, like, pay-per-view we got in the actual pay-per-view we don't really watch the pre-show except for the matches that are on the pre-show just to let you guys know so we i'm not gonna be talking about what else happened on the pre-show because i didn't um do much else about it uh so they have like a weird movie trailer thing beforehand with like completely the jack sparrow and impression and anything and it was actually cool for a bit there uh they had like really cool um like hero type build up for everyone and they had like these really cool shots of everyone looking all heroish and like Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. I don't know why Seth Rollins looked really heroish, but he did. Uh, Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, all looking very hero-like. Uh, Edge looking very hero-like. It was awesome. Um, even though Roman's not on the show, <laughs> they had the Viking Raiders in there. Even though they're not on the show, it was just strange. Um, Gronk opening up as host and bringing Mojo in was depressing. I didn't like it. I didn't like Gronk hosting it. It was. First, his outfit was weird as fuck. Then he brought Mojo in, which disappointed me. And it was just, I don't know, it was weird. It, I don't know. It was strange, guys. It just, yeah. Just moving on. First match of the main show, the second match of the night, was the Women's Tag Team Championship match between the Kabuki Warriors. And I guess their technical name is Bliss Cross Applesauce. I guess Nikki Cross posted that at one point, and that became their official name. I call them the Five Foot Furies because it just sounds better to me personally. Uh, Jesse and I both predicted predicted Bliss and Cross. Um, start of the match, Asuka's taunting uh, Bliss. She tags insane. Same messes with the bow and Bliss's hair, and then 
gets slapped like she slapped the taste out of Kyrie's mouth. Like I'm pretty sure Kyrie was speaking English for a minute there because of how hard she got slapped. Uh, Cross is tagged in and goes wild on Kyrie. Uh, Asuka's tagged back in, taunts more as she attacks Cross. Bliss tags back in and Nikki sends Asuka out and starts attacking Kyrie. Uh, Bliss front flips off the apron into Asuka, which I thought was a really cool spot. We don't see Alexa Bliss do a whole lot of things. And side note, Alexa Bliss was supposed to be played out. Uh, to WrestleMania by Bowling for Soup, which I'm very disappointed I didn't get to see because Bowling for Soup's song about Alexa Bliss is fucking amazing, and I really wish that they could have done this entrance. Hopefully, they'll reuse it for SummerSlam, maybe. Uh, they can't really reuse it for Mania, so maybe SummerSlam. We'll see, I guess, because their song is really good, and we don't get to see a huge amount of cool entrances anymore, so yeah. Um, where was I at? Nikki hits Kyrie with a cross body off the apron. Tag move by Bliss and Cross as Cross comes back in. Sane comes in, taking it to Cross, but she reverses, sending Sane outside. Uh, Bliss drop kicks Asuka, sending her face first in the barricade. It looked like she hit really hard, but it was kind of a cool spot at the same time. Kabuki Warriors start taking control over the match. Asuka attacks Cross before her and Sane start double teaming her in the corner. Tag team basement drop kick before Kyrie starts attacking her again. Bliss comes back in and takes down Sane, hits her with a big drop kick. Double teaming to Bliss in the corner, double knees to Bliss's face as she's hung up in the corner. It looked very brutal and yeah, it was a cool spot in my opinion. Asuka's back in, Sane attacks her and pulls her hair in the corner. So she's like under the bottom turnbuckle and Sane's pulling on her hair and like kind of like doing that to it. It was, it was a weird, a weird moment. Uh, Bliss gets caught with a knee to the face, gets the knees up on a hip attack in the corner, which I don't think I've ever seen somebody reverse a hip attack by putting their knees into the person's ass, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, Sand and Cross are both in, cross body, Kyrie rakes the eyes, goes for the attack in the corner, but Cross reverses, uh, cross reverses but Asuka then comes in and stops the draping crossroads, which she had already been tagged in beforehand. Neck breaker to Asuka, but Sane gets the insane elbow to break it up, which I thought was a really cool spot to break it up, and... What I love about this is it reminds me of Elimination Chamber back a couple years ago when they had like the cool spots where they didn't like at all have you see anybody else off camera and it was literally like it was just a shock hit every time. They did the same thing with this. They had the insane elbow. It came out of a shock moment. Uh, Asuka got the Asuka lock in after she got out of a pin and Alexa broke it up with Twisted Bliss. Uh, Alexa broke it up with a Twisted Bliss uh, which I thought was really cool. Like you didn't see it coming. It just kind of happened. Um, right after she got hit by an interceptor spear, which you didn't really see ha coming. It was really cool, and I like the fact that it was taped because they had the opportunity to kind of choreograph things a little bit better and kind of prepare surprises a little bit better. I don't like that it was taped because obviously, you know, the spectacle of WrestleMania is a cool thing. So, And I'm also glad that no spoilers uh, have come out about Night 2 or Night 1 in the time before WrestleMania happened. Uh, Sane tags in and Asuka takes Cross down. Insane elbow is avoided. Cross attacks her up top. Asuka tags back in. They go after Cross for a double team. Powerbomb slash diving forearm to Cross for a two count. Sane almost hits Asuka. Sidesteps Asuka in the corner. Uh, swinging neck breaker followed by Twisted Bliss and Alexa and Nikki pick up the win. 10 out of 10. 1 and 1 on predictions. It was a great fucking match. Uh, there's lots of amazing spots. Great camera work to hide surprise breakups of the Asuka lock and the pin after the swinging neck breaker respectively. Um, yeah, it was just really cool. I loved it. Match number three, men's singles match. We got King Douchebag versus Elias. Prediction was Elias for both. Corbin comes out saying, he's not even here, so count to ten and raise my hand, and then you hear a strong guitar. Elias comes out after Corbin shit talks him, hits him with the guitar. JBL, who's on commentary, by the way, so that was fucking great, uh, says, oh, ring the damn bell. It's disqualified. It's like the bell hasn't even rung yet, you fucking dumb Texan son of a bitch. God damn saying that knowing full well my girlfriend's Texas from Texas. Oh wait, no, she was born in Arizona. She just lives in Texas. Ah, it's okay. I can still make fun of Texans. Elias goes after Corbin immediately, but Corbin gets a bit of control and sends him outside. Cole compares JBL to Corbin. Seems similar enough to me. Both douchebags. Both apparently really hated backstage. Nah, I'm just kidding. Corbin's actually really liked backstage from what I've heard. He's actually a very nice guy off of camera. Um, but yeah, it's it, I, I get the, uh, the, the thing of it. They're both assholes. So, you know, why not? Elias taking control back until Corbin throws him into the turnbuckle. Elias whips Corbin into the post after. Both men are down. Elias keeping control over Corbin. Uh, he loses on Corbin in the corner for a bit. Hits him with a swinging net breaker for a two count. Uh, Elias heads up top. Corbin rolls away. Hits deep six for a two count. Jumping knee to Corbin for a two count. Let's just let's just respect the height that Elias gets with his jumping knee. Like, there's some people who do some fucking high up jumping knee strikes, but god damn does Elias get some fucking height on that like that vertical is amazing 
Um, Corbin uses the ropes during a pin and is caught. Elias rolls him up as he gets in the ref's face and grabs the tights. Elias wins 10 out of 10, 2 and 1 on predictions. I think it's weird that like all the losses Corbin's been getting for the past few months uh, have been because of ref issues. Like he gets in the ref's face and the next thing you know he loses. Like uh, the Saudi show against Seth, he got pushed back by the ref and he got rolled up. Like it keeps happening. Like control your anger better, bro. But also fuck yeah, Elias won. I was so happy that Elias won because Elias deserves it. He nearly got murdered the other night. Now. They do actually have another crash pad, a few more uh, spots where there's like, you can tell they use the crash pad, but they hide the sound so much better than they did with the Elias spot. Match number four, the Raw Women's Championship match, Becky Lynch versus Shayna Baszler. Prediction was Baszler for both. Becky drives up in the truck, looks fucking badass. Baszler goes for the Kirafuda immediately and gains control very quick in the match. Becky avoids getting slammed to the side of the table as she starts gaining control and throws Shayna into the steps. Much like she would have, if she would have gotten slammed to the table, it would have been much like uh, Raw last week. Becky attacks in the corner, keeping control over Shayna. Goes for the step-up kick, but Baszler catches her and hits her with a knee strike. Disarmor is avoided. Uh, Kirafuda is reversed into a roll-up for a two-count, or for a two. Uh, she hits a spinebuster sort of type takedown. It's kind of a UFC sort of uh, takedown that I've seen before because I play a lot of UFC. I'm actually playing through tournaments on all of the different weight classes right now. And it is a pain in the ass because I have not played UFC in a while. It's the first time I've played UFC in like five, six months. Uh, hits Cutter for a two count, but yeah, it's like a really cool UFC sort of takedown is the way I looked at it. Fighting on the apron, back and forth strikes until Baszler takes the advantage. Uh, Becky hits a Uranagi onto the apron. Baszler takes control again, drops Becky back first onto her knees and transitions into an arm bar. Becky grips her hands together into a cover for a two count. She then rolls, or uh, sorry, Shayna then rolls into a disarmor, but Becky gets out of it. Gets a knee to the face for a two count. Kirafuda over the ropes, but Becky hangs her up on them. She tries to disarm her on the ropes, but then that gets reversed into another Kirafuda clutch. Over the ropes before Shayna lets her drop to the outside before she would have gotten disqualified. Shayna then follows her, follows her outside, slams her into the announce table two times, uh, breaks the count. Lynch plays possum, tries for the disarmor, but Baszler works it in the Kirafuda. Becky rolls through and Becky retains. Uh, eight out of ten, two and two on predictions. I'm not mad that Becky won. Let me let me specify. I'm not mad that Becky won. I'm not mad that me and Jesse are two and two on predictions. It's just the ending seemed weird. I get it. It's like they probably. I feel like it was really awkward to see. Like it was a bit shitty that it went down that way, and it felt awkward. I'm wondering if it's to set up for something down the line. Now, again, I said I th I felt like maybe it'd lead to Ronda coming back and helping Shayna win. However, again, uh, maybe that was the original plan. Maybe they had some sort of plan for Ronda to make her return. Or maybe they're going to have some sort of plan for Ronda to make her return if Becky and Shayna have a rematch. Because this is not a very definitive win for the man. Uh, so maybe Shayna is going to use that to her advantage to taunt Becky into a rematch. Because we all know that Becky will call her shot that she will beat Shayna. Um, so far she calls her shots and she's gotten them, but, uh, I don't know. Shayna's different. Shayna's not a regular competitor, you know? So I guess we'll see where this goes. I'm very excited. Match number five, the Intercontinental Championship match, Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan. Predictions, Zayn for me, Daniel Bryan for Jesse. Uh, Zayn tries to, to buy time before the match, uh, before starting the match. There was actually a point in time where I was like, I just want Zayn to lose now because I was pissed the fuck off. He kept avoiding Daniel every chance he got, running out of the ring over and over and over again. Brian chased him outside, but Knack and Cesaro uh, get in his way. Gulak takes them down and starts fighting Cesaro, takes them both out over the barricade. They're gone for like, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes at that point after that. Uh, Brian tells Sammy he can't, he can just leave as he tries to, to, uh, Daniel runs out and attacks him, dragging him back to the ring, destroys Sammy in the ring. He tries to run again, but Brian attacks the leg before going over top of him and punching him again. Very scary looking suicide dive as, uh, Daniel nearly overshot it. He might've a little bit cause it looked like his head may have hit the barricade. Missile drop kick followed by a kip up, uh, slaps him in the face and calls him a nobody, uh, kicks in the corner, followed by a corner drop kick, knee to the face and Sammy is crying. Sammy legit started crying, uh, but he starts taking control over Daniel. Daniel starts taking control again, hits yes kicks to a kneeling Sami Zayn, stomps to the face. Cesaro and Nakamura take Gulak down. Suicide dive to take those two down. Goes up top, gets caught with a Huva kick. Sammy wins, 10 out of 10. 3 and 2 for me, 2 and 3 for Jesse. Uh, it was a great match once they actually got under the way with uh, Sammy actually being in the ring. Uh, and 
so far was my favorite uh, at that point was my favorite match of night one you'll see what my favorite match of night one is once we get uh further down the card but i'm very happy that Sami Zayn won i like Sami Zayn. i like daniel bryan i like the fact that he caught uh daniel off the top rope with a luva kick that was a really cool reversal spot that we don't really see a whole lot of cool like cake reversal spots like that so it was really cool to see um, and I personally like Sami Zayn having the title. I, I think he's a great guy to have the championship. Match number six, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship triple threat match. 1v1v1 as, uh, The Miz got sent home from the tapings, uh, because he was sick. Which this was kind of rumored and it was never really posted on the Wikipedia page or anything to say that this was the new match until basically we came up to the show. The pre-show announced that, yeah, this was the official match. Um... So, John Morrison versus Kofi Kingston versus Jimmy Uso is the match. Uh, prediction was John Morrison for both. Obviously, it just switched from Miz and Morrison to John Morrison for both of us. Uh, Going to be interesting for a three-man triple threat for uh, tag titles. I don't like when they do singles matches for tag titles. Like, it's so fucking weird to me. Like, Or when they have one person face two people in a tag title match, a la AOP versus Seth Rollins a few years ago. It just, I don't know. I don't like it. Lots of quick reversals, monkey flips, all three men go for ladders and go back inside. Fighting up top as all three ladders are set up, Morrison kicks down Jimmy's ladder and starts fighting with Kofi. Jimmy drags Morrison down, Kofi hits a crossbody to Jimmy. Morrison heads back up, fighting with Kofi, hits him with the sliding knee strike. Lots of missed moves as Jimmy sets the ladder back up, Kofi follows him up, Kofi takes Jimmy down, but Morrison climbs up to stop him, takes him down and tries to steady himself. Jimmy grabs his leg, forcing Morrison to slide down the ladder. Like, he did the full-on, like, side fucking grip slide. It was fantastic looking. Jimmy sets the ladder back up. Kofi tries to springboard through the ladder, but catches his foot on the ladder. And then Uso and Morrison just toss his ass outside. I thought it was the funniest spot of the night because we don't see Kofi Kingston trip up a whole lot. Jimmy tries to slam the ladder on Morrison, but he is lucky and it misses. Like, it was set up, and he went right in that little top triangle between where, like, the, the supports are. Um, he hits him, uh, like with a thumb in the eye or pokes his eye, something along those lines. He attacks his knee again after getting the ladder up. He attacks him with the ladder. Jimmy chops John. He gets, uh, he sets him up on the top rope with a ladder set on the ropes. He goes on the ladder and sets up for a superplex, but then John reverses it, setting more, uh, Jimmy down on it and does the weird parkour flip move thing he does, uh, onto Jimmy and onto the ladder, kicks him out of the ring. Kofi springboards in and takes down Morrison with a Hurricane Rana off the ladder, which was fucking awesome. Kofi is alone in the ring, starts climbing, but Jimmy goes in and they fight a bit. Jimmy's thrown out. Kofi dives over the top rope onto Morrison and the ladder. Jimmy runs at Kofi on the barricade, but Kofi throws a ladder at him, which was a scary looking spot. Like he was tightrope walking on the barricade and then just whipped the fucking ladder at him. Um, Kofi attacking Jimmy outside, bridges the ladder and sets Jimmy on it, going wild on his chest with it. Morrison goes up top, but Kofi takes him down to stop him from stealing his thunder. Morrison and Kofi uh, both go up top. John goes tightrope over the ropes to Kofi. Spanish fly into the ring. I think it would have been cool if they'd done it on a Jimmy because I'm a psychopath. Jimmy hits a splash on Morrison, goes to climb, but Kofi grabs his heel, then grabs the back of his knee, fighting on the ladder. Kofi climbs inside of the ladder, inside of like where it's set up. He's climbing this part. It's really weird. Uh, attacks Jimmy. Morrison goes up and stops Kofi. They fight up top of it. He gets sent down. Kofi tries to grab the titles, but John stops him. Mushroom stomp to Morrison off the ladder. Uh, ladder bridge between the ropes and other ladder. Kofi is thrown face first into the side of it. It's just brutal looking. Parkour over the ladder, but gets caught with a super kick after. Goes up the ladder as Morrison is on the bridge ladder. He tips Jimmy off the ladder to the outside, pretty much murdering him. And this is the crash pad spot I was talking about. You don't hear the crash pad get hit. It's very, very realistic sounding that he actually landed on the ground, which is what I like. However, I don't like to think they used the crash pad. I think Big E was just waiting. He caught him, and then he slammed him down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Kofi climbs up to stop John from getting the victory. Jimmy sets up another ladder and climbs up, attacking Kofi and John. All three men have their hands on the titles. The belts get unclipped, so the little gold thing that holds the championships is unclipped. Morrison has a hold of the titles. They hit him with a double headbutt. He falls, but he takes the titles with him. John Morrison and The Miz retain 10 out of 10, 4 and 2 for me, 3 and 3 for Jesse. It was a fucking match and a half. That was wild. And props to all three men in the match. Like, straight up, that was great. Everything about it was awesome. Uh, especially the way Morrison won. It was kind of like a sneaky little heel victory that I think fits perfectly. Match number seven, men's singles match. Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens. Prediction was Owens for both. Seth is really taking the side nickname to a whole new level with his attire. He's in like full white in a robe. 
kind of looks like a cross between a Power Ranger, a Priest, and Andrade Cien Almas, in my personal opinion. Runs out for a sec before starting to attack Kevin, and they fight outside. He attacks him in the corner after they get into the ring. Sent on to Seth, followed by another one. He rolls out before the cannonball. Kevin follows him outside, taking it to him out there. Owen sets up for a powerbomb in the apron, but Seth reverses it and drops him spine first onto it. Then hits a falcon arrow onto the apron, which, after a little bit of fighting, is followed by a suicide dive by Kevin Owens, or two Kevin Owens. Goes for another and hits it, slams him into the barricade. Goes for a third, but KO catches him with a punch. Sling blade as Kevin gets back into the ring. Kick to the gut. Stomp is avoided. Avoided a second time. Owens hits a big DDT. Sidesteps Seth in the corner. Hits a super kick. Hits a cannonball. Hits a swanton bomb because it's not a fucking senton, Michael Cole. That's a goddamn swanton bomb or a fucking somersault or a front flip. Do not call it a senton because it's not a senton. It just... Sounds weird calling what he does that move a senton. Uh, he gets two count off that. Super kick by Seth is reversed. The stunners avoided. Inziguri, big close on off the ropes by KO. KO drags Seth up top. They're fighting up there. Super flex is avoided. He digs in the eyes of Owens. Sunset flip to the buckle bomb. Glad to see Seth still trying to, uh, still trusting himself enough to do that and trusting the person he's working with enough to do the sunset flip power bomb. Super kick a second. The stomp is reversed in the pop up power bomb. And then Seth hits KO with the ring bell in the face. Ding, 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 ding. KO wins by DQ. Eight and a half out of ten. Five and two for Jesse. Four and three for me. I like the result, but didn't fully expect the ending. But hey, why not? We don't really see the ring bell endings mat and uh, the ring bell ending matches much anymore. Um, like that doesn't happen a whole lot. But then Kevin Owens, the ballsy son of a bitch that he is, gets on the mic and tells Seth he doesn't get to end it this way. He doesn't get to end it on his terms. Calls him a little bitch, calls him back in the ring to finish it, wants us, wants to restart it, no DQ, no rules. Guess the ratings and predictions record is wiped from before. Uh, hits KO with a knee immediately and then throws him outside. Attacks him with kicks outside, throwing KO into the barricade by the timekeeper's area. Attacks him with a stab, grabs his signature weapon, a steel chair. Ha, <laughs> ha, hang on a minute there, Seth. Uh, attacks him with that a few times. Uh, after several chair shots, he sets up the table. Uh... KO comes back and hits Rollins with the ring belt and hits him with it again. Seth is now prone on the table. KO walks away towards the back. I was very confused at this point. And then we see him up on the Mania sign behind the table. He just jumps the fuck off of it in full Shane O'Mac style and goes through Seth, who then makes dying whale sounds. It's perfect. Shane O'Mac type thing, followed by dying whale sounds. That's enough. KO goes to the corner, pulls Seth up by his hair, hits the stunner. Now KO wins. 15 out of 10. 5 and 2 for Jesse, or for me, 4 and 3 for Jesse. There we go. What a way to finish this feud. Uh, everything about it was great. The false end of the match was great. KO calling for it to continue with no DQ. I loved it. This match was my favorite of the night. And now, before we go into the, my least favorite match of the night, R Truth is up top with Gronk and Mojo trying to like hide from the people chasing him for the 24 7. I-97 South, North, European, yeah. I don't remember all the names, but you know what I'm talking about, the 24-7 championship, Gronk then elbows him, tries to pin him, but Mojo pulls him off and takes the title, poor Gronk, how rude of Mojo, Gronk just kind of sat there looking very sad, and it was just, oh, it was hilarious, match number eight, Universal Championship match, Goldberg versus Braun Strowman, prediction was Goldberg for both, now really quick, before I get into this, let me specify, a lot of people were pissed that Roman got this title match out of nowhere, but Braun getting a title match out of nowhere when Roman has to pull out for legitimate health concerns and no one bats a fucking eye? God, dude, I swear. Braun does, like, two moves. And people bitch about Roman doing two moves. Braun got this match out of nowhere. And people bitch about Roman getting this match out of nowhere. This was such a stupid fucking way to put this match. Fuck this match! Like, seriously, fuck this match! Running power slams avoided. Spear, another one, another one. Holy shit, match of the fucking year, you guys. Another spear, the jackhammer, because you goddamn know if he can't get the Fiend Bray Wyatt up, he ain't getting Braun Strowman up for a fucking jackhammer. It's reversed into a power slam. Another one, another one, and a fucking another one. One, two, three. Braun Strowman's your new fucking Universal Championship. Zero out of ten. Five and three for me. Four and four for Jesse. Fuck this goddamn match, man. Seriously. It was garbage. It was just spears and power slams. Fuck out of here, WWE. What kind of fucking trash is this? I had to drink two fucking beers to make it through this goddamn match without blowing a fucking gasket. Let me just specify. Personally speaking, I don't like Braun Strowman. I look at him as another fucking Goldberg. A dude who does very little moves, can barely talk on the mic, 
and has very short, stupid fucking matches, and when he goes long, can't fucking wrestle for shit. But for some reason, everyone fucking eats it up because he has stupid fucking catchphrases. I don't like Braun Strowman. I don't like him as my fucking champion. Get the fucking belt off him as quick as you goddamn can. Fuck the coronavirus, because now we have this stupid fucking asshole as the goddamn champion. And Jesse made a joke prediction, which I wish would have came true. Roman Reigns coming out and being announced as a third competitor for this, turning heel, aligning himself with Vince McMahon, and winning the goddamn championship championship in a no DQ triple threat match because if people are going to boo Roman again for no fucking reason then god damn it we better give him a fucking reason fuck this match it sucks and I saw someone on Facebook who decided to say that oh this is only a bad match or some shit because because Ro- Goldberg can't wrestle no this match was dog shit regardless of competitors a match that is literally only fucking finishers is not a good match You could have AJ Styles and The Undertaker in this match, and it could be all fucking finishers, and I would give it a 0 out of goddamn 10, because that is garbage. I am sorry if you like Braun... No, I'm not sorry if you like Braun Strowman, because this match sucked ass from start to fucking finish in, like, a minute and a half. Fuck that match, fuck Goldberg, and fuck Braun Strowman. Match number nine, the actual fucking main event for night one, which actually made me go away happy from this fucking first night. The Boneyard match, AJ Styles versus The Undertaker. Prediction, I predicted Styles, Jesse predicted The Undertaker. Lead up shot at a graveyard for this match, and a hearse rolls up with Undertaker's music playing in the background. Two druids pull a coffin out, and boom! Y'all don't want none, it's AJ Styles coming out the coffin. It was a really cool swerve, I loved it. Beautiful entrance. And then, you hear the bike. The American Badass rolls up to motherfucking Metallica. God damn it, I missed the American Badass taker. God, it was awesome. Uh, the match starts. Uh, he ends up grabbing, I think it was like a railroad spike. He goes to hit AJ, but he misses, and he goes into a window, and he cuts his arm open by accident. He stops AJ from running, slams him on the windshield of the, he- uh, the hearse. He falls off the car after lots of punches. Dirt gets thrown in the taker's eyes. Low blow by AJ. He tries to hit taker into the grave. But AJ ends up falling into it. Uh, Gals and Anderson get involved, and they have many drawers. Like, lights pop up in this barn building, and I thought it was a car about to come hit Taker. But instead, it was a bunch of drawers that come out of the building to attack him. They all get wiped out, and then Gals and Anderson's... Gals and Anderson's? Gals and Anderson take Taker down. They try to attack him with the shovel, but he boots Anderson in the face. He then attacks them with it. AJ breaks a gravestone over his the back of his head out of nowhere. Again... I say they did really cool spots with this. AJ broke his finger on Taker's face. He's like, look, look, you, look what you did. You broke my finger. He's like, what have you done? You broke my finger. He's acting like Taker's the reason he <laughs> broke his finger. AJ tells him to get up and tackles him through a shed wall. God, I love this match. Flips AJ off from the ground as he's like trying to catch his breath. AJ keeps calling it broken down old bitch. And, you know, Taker's noises definitely make it sound that like it's true breaks the shovel over him knocking him into the grave he drops some dirt on him taker teleports behind him grabs him by the throat and hits him over and over again aj climbs the ladder to the rooftop taker conjures fire behind aj then hits him with a big boot then beats down gals and anderson throws gals off the roof while he's dead tombstones anderson on the roof while he's dead taker taking the shots from aj like a champ choke slams aj off the roof through another building's roof it, from what it looked like like maybe a shed Helps AJ up and walks him towards the grave, drops him on the ground. AJ starts apologizing. Choke slam sets up, but he's like, you know what? I'm not going to bury you. You gave your all in this match. You worked your ass off in this match. And that's a lot more than other people gave. Hugged him, gave him a false sense of hope. I was like, oh, AJ's going to turn on him right here and throw his ass in. Nope, big boots his ass into the grave, goes and dumps the dirt on AJ. Taker wins 10 out of 10, 5 and 4 for me and Jesse. Shows AJ's hand sticking out of the grave as Taker grabs his bandana and rides off in the moonlight. Uh, he like, snapped his fingers or held his fist up or something and uh, some fire rose up and his symbol showed up on the back of the building. Great match. Extremely well done in my opinion. Very, very cool gimmicky style thing they did for the end of night one. Now, I do realize a lot of people have complained about this match online, but personally I liked it. Yes, was it hokey? Yes, was it a little bit cheesy? Yes. But, so was like the ultimate deletion, the final deletion, the House of Horrors match. The Firefly Funhouse match is probably going to be really fucking hokey. This is what wrestling's about and I loved it. This match was great. It was a great way to end night one. It's better than Goldberg and Braun Strowman, that's for damn sure. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the review for night one. I will see you guys Monday for the review of night two. Stay home! Peace!